So this is 8.3a in trigonometry, the product and quotient theorem. All right, at this point, we have taken things like 1 plus i square root of 3, and we have multiplied it by negative 2 square root of 3 plus 2i. And we use the FOIL method, and we would come up with an answer like negative 4 square root of 3 minus 4i. And I'll leave that up to you to use the FOIL method to be able to come up with that answer. Now we can also find that same answer using the trigonometric form. Now remember we had um, x plus yi, which is the rectangular form, and then we had r cis theta is the trigonometric form or the polar form that you did in the last lesson. So we're going to look at being able to multiply using what's called the product theorem in order to use um, this here to find our answer instead of multiplying these because sometimes we will be given our, equi our question, our examples in the uh, trig form and then we're going to be responsible to find the answer and convert it into this form. So what we've got is we've got a developed theorem and I'm not going to go through explaining the theorem, I'm just going to give it to you um, because explaining it is long and drawn out and I doubt that you really care how we came up with it, um, you just want to use it. And the way this works is we take um, R1, R2 and multiply them. Okay, That's if we're given two pieces, we're multiplying two things. So if we're multiplying R cis theta times R cis theta, we're going to call 1 and 2. So that because they're both R's, we need to um, show that there's two different R's. And then we do the same thing with our thetas. All right. So in math, one of the things they do is they call the R value here, they call it the absolute value because whenever, no matter what R is, it's going to be a positive number. So it's the absolute value. So we're going to call R absolute value. Theta, they call what is known as the argument. So if I mention absolute value, I'm talking about R. If I'm talking about, um, if I'm talking about arguments, I'm talking about theta. Boy, my brain just isn't working very well today. All right, so um, here is how I multiply these together. I just have a formula. And again, it's R1, R2. It's cis. Boy, that's a weird parenthesis. Theta 1 plus theta 2. So there's the formula. All right, so let's try this formula out. If I have 3 times the cosine of 45 degrees plus I sine of 45 degrees, and I'm multiplying that by 2 times cosine of 135 plus I sine of 135. Okay, sorry I'm a little monotonous here. Just writing that out and saying it. Okay, that's example one. All right, so here's how we multiply them. Let's go ahead and put braces around here so we know that the three and two are included in that. All right, so here's how we multiply it. We take our R1 and R2 and multiply them. Not too terribly difficult. Then, what we do is we uh, add the arguments, angle 1 and angle 2. Alright, so here's angle 1, 45, and here's angle 2, 135. So we're going to write those as cis 45 plus 135. Okay, we're just going to show that we're adding those. And then we can actually add those and get 6 cis 180. 
Okay, so that's not too bad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and split it up. And I'm going to write it not in the um, short version of it, but I'm going to write it in the long version. 6 cosine of 180 plus I sine of 180. And the only reason I'm doing this is because we need to find what the cosine of 180 is and what the sine of 180 is. And when it's written this way, it's a little bit harder to tell what you're trying to do. So I spread it out. All right, so cosine of 180 degrees, using your handy-dandy calculator, you find is negative 1. And then we've got I. Sine of 180 is 0. And then this whole thing is multiplied by 6. So we distribute, and we get negative 6 for our answer. And we are done. That's all we're doing. So notice what I did. I first of all converted the trig form of the problem, and I just followed the rule that I gave you as far as R1, R2, cis, theta 1 plus theta 2. That's all I did. Translated it into that. Then I split these up into the longer version here, multiplied these, and then I found out what the cosine is of the angle and the sine is with the angle, and just combined everything and ended up with this here. Okay, so we'll try a couple more here as we go, and let's start the next video.